Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm doing this look for you. Um, it's kind of like a romantic look. I'm filming this before Valentine's Day. I'm gonna put a picture of this look up on my Instagram before Valentine's Day. So technically it's like a Valentine's Day look, but this video is gonna go up after Valentine's Day, so sorry. But um, I think this look can be used whenever though. So generally when I do this look, I will do these eyes with a, mm, that's not good, with a nude lip. And I really like the way it looks with a nude lip, but you can do it with a more bright lip. It's really whatever you're feeling like. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm doing. Kind of like I wanted to do a cut crease, but soft. And that is what we achieved today with this more neutral cut crease, focusing more on like the lashes and the lip and all that kind of stuff. Very glowy skin as always. But yeah, that is what I'm gonna be doing today for you guys. Hope you enjoy this video so much. And if you wanna see how I got the look, then please keep on watching. Okay guys, so to start off the look today, I'm priming as usual my e.l.f. Camo Concealer. So I think I might have mentioned that I started using the um, Hydrating Camo Concealer as well. I really like that new version also. However, um, it does crease on me as an eyeshadow base. Like, I mean, it takes all day to crease, but it will finally crease if I use it as eyeshadow base. So, I am using just the original one as my eyeshadow base, but I am gonna use the other one for my face today, um, like my under eye one, um, because I like the hydration it gives. But like I said, it just creases too much to use it on my actual like eye. Um, okay, so once that's on to start off this look, I'm gonna go into my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Medium. This is the powder I've been using lately, actually just for like setting powder. Um, but I'm gonna go in and use this as like a first transition color for my eye look today. So this look is very, um, I don't know, like I, I really like how this turned out. It's sort of, it's that cut crease that someone like, I love a cut crease, but because it's like softer, I don't know, like it's a cut crease, but it's soft. Like it's not too much, you know? I don't know. Uh, this powder is just like a shade darker than my natural skin tone. So that's why when I put it on my eye is like my first transition shade. It does give like a little bit of color, not too much, but just like a little bit, which is nice. Once that is done today, I'm going to be using my Stacey Marie palette and I'm going to be sticking over on this side for my eye look today. I'm going to be using basic um, intuition and then pillow talk from this palette for my eyeshadow look. Okay. So now with the Morphe M441, I'm going to go into the shade basic. And this is just a really pretty kind of warm crease color. And I'm going to start blending this all the way across my crease, a little lower than we did with our face powder. As usual, kind of getting it all up in my eyebrow in the front, because I just like the way that looks on me. And I'm not being really intentional about like pulling it really far, as I have done with a lot of looks lately. I'm just sort of letting it kind of fade out and happen in terms of like the outer corner here. It's not gonna be like really like harsh. It's just gonna kind of like gently kind of go out and end. Once that's done, I'm gonna take a Morphe JH40 brush and I'm going into the shade Intuition, which is the really dark brown, but I am taking like the tiniest little bit of this at a time. There is a shade, the one that's in between these two shades in the palette that you could definitely use as like a in between if you wanna have you know, um, if it's harder for you maybe to blend out some deeper colors or whatever. But um, that shade would have made this look a little too warm and I didn't want this like overly warm. You know, it's just like a very soft, kind of warm, kind of neutral kind of look. Um, and that definitely would have made it too warm. So I'm just gonna take this color little by little because it is dark to make sure I get a nice fade. And I'm keeping that starting in the outer corner but I am pulling it through the crease a little bit as well. And then again, I'm just kind of letting that fade out the outer corner. I'm gonna take a little bit of that color intuition, the dark brown. I literally just like dab this brush like that one time in the color. And I'm going to take this and blend as well. And this is just gonna give us some bigger, kind of softer blending. And just having a little bit of that color on there is going to help deepen up just a little more. 
but because the brush is really fluffy, it's not gonna look so like intense. It's gonna look more blown out. If you don't pay enough attention and make sure that this area right here is like the depth you need it to be, sometimes you'll end up going in with your cut crease and then the cut crease will cover up too much of your depth and it won't be like dark enough around the edge if that makes sense. So I make sure like before I go in with the cut crease, I'm making sure that the area right here has the right depth I want so that it's dark enough once I cut out my crease shape. Okay, so far pretty simple. I am now gonna go in and cut my crease and I'm gonna use a different color concealer for my cut crease because I want it to be a little whiter and stand out a little more. So I'm gonna go in with the Morphe concealer in the shade zero, which is just the white one obviously, and get a little bit of this and I'm gonna use my Peaches and Cream PC40 brush, one of my favorite cut crease brushes. And then I'm just gonna do my normal cut crease that goes about halfway or three quarters of the way across. All right, next I'm gonna be going in, once that's down, with the shade Pillow Talk from the corner of the palette and using that to completely set the lid area where we just did the cut crease. And this Pillow Talk shade is very pigmented. It looks like it's gonna be like a cream color, but I don't know, I feel like it definitely comes out more white than it looks like it's going to. It's very pigmented. So I want this inner corner to be, obviously, the light with cut crease, but I don't want it to be like too harsh, I guess. So I'm gonna go back in with my MAC Face Powder on this blending brush we've been using and then just kind of blend that like halfway across that cut crease so that it kind of softens out a little bit and it's not like fully white all the way across. I'm gonna go in with basic on the same brush and do kind of the same thing, just leave that more so in the outer corner and then I'll go back with the smaller uh, brush and the shade intuition the darkest one and then kind of do the same thing and per my usual kind of thing we're getting that nice fade over kind of look it looks very blended and softened over and it takes away a little bit of the harshness of the white for the inner corner I'm gonna take the same MAC 242 brush and I'm gonna use the um, cookie highlight from Benefit absolutely beautiful and then I'm just gonna use this on my inner corner. Okay, so the lower lash line is gonna be pretty simple. Um, when I was blending in my concealer, I did kind of blend just a little bit down there, which is gonna help everything stick. I'm gonna go in with this Zoeva 322 little angled brush, and I'm gonna take the shade Intuition again, and this is gonna go on the waterline as well as across the lower lash line. But this look kind of different than I feel like what I've been usually doing lately. I'm not like pulling this really far down because I don't want it to be like too crazy. I wanna keep it more softly smoky, nothing too intense. And I am gonna take a little bit of this color and put it right here on the top like inner corner because it's gonna help the lashes blend in better. I'm then gonna take my smaller blending brush again, the JH40, with the shade Basic, and I'm just going to buff out the dark color, and then I'll take just a little dab of the dark color, and then just blend a little more, just to make sure there's a really smooth kind of transition from the depth and kind of fading down. All right guys, so that is it for the eyeshadow. I'm going to quickly put on my mascara and my lashes. I am using the Nabla Major Pleasure Mascara. I've really been loving this. And then for lashes today, I'm gonna use these guys. It is the Lily Lashes in the style Miami. These are the faux mink ones. Um, it's from their little Lash and Tine thing that they did. Um, I got this obviously at work at Ulta. Um, but yeah, it's just the Foam Ink Miami. So it's the same as their normal one, I guess just in like a little cuter case, which I actually like. Makes a really good um, kind of thing to put your foundation on, to kind of pick your foundation off of. That's how I've been using it. So anyways, I'm gonna throw these on with my mascara and then I will be right back. I will also actually, sorry, to my brows. I'm using my like favorite current brow routine, to get this like a beautiful, very fluffy, natural looking brow. I do the Gimme Brow in the shade four from Benefit and I brush that through all the way and then all the way to the end. And then I take their um, Precisely My Brow Pencil, also in the shade four. And I basically just take this on the bottom a little bit 
and right on the top of the arch a little bit. But then I just leave the front uh, just the way it is. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do really quick and I will be right back. All right, so eyes are done and now let's do our face makeup real quick. I'm going to prime. So I've actually been liking primers lately. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know I don't usually like primers. I've never really liked primers before, but I've actually found some that actually do things and I really like them. So probably my number one right now is the Urban Decay uh, Primer. It's their newest one. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but it's in like the taller, like squeezy tube bottle, but it has a pump on it. It's so good. It's honestly insane the amount of long wear you get from that primer. I've never had a primer that actually did anything for me, like I said, and that one actually does things for me. And if I wear it, my makeup stays on longer and looks better, and that's never happened to me before. So highly recommend that one. Today I'm gonna try a different one. Well, when I say try, I've already tried it a bunch, but I also really have been liking this one. It's the new Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus, and this is the perfecting and smoothing one. So I'm gonna use this today. Next for foundation today, I'm gonna use my Estee Lauder Devil Wear. I've been using this so much lately that I ran out and just had to buy a new bottle. It just is, it's that bitch. Like it's one of the best foundations literally ever. And um, it just works literally so well. So I use the shade 2N, which is called Desert Beige, which actually used to be 2W, but they extended their shade range a couple years ago. So. This is not considered neutral compared to the warm ones they have. So I'm gonna throw this on really quick. I'm just gonna use my current favorite sponge, which is the Wet n Wild sponge. And yeah, I'm gonna throw this on and I'll be right back. For my concealer, I'm using the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, but like I said, I'm gonna use the hydrating one on my face. This color is called Fair Warm. If you guys know, like back when I first tried the e.l.f. concealer, I got Fair Warm in the original one, and it's like literally white. Like it's so light because it's the only color they had. And the colors in this formulation are very different, which I'm sure if you guys watch much YouTube or makeup news type thing, you'll probably have heard that before. The colors are very strange. So this is not one I would buy like online. I would definitely look at this in person. It is now like, I know it's a Target, it's now at all the Ultas and everything too. Um, so you have like the ability to go look at them in person because yeah, if you look at the boxes even, like as they're up on the shelf and you kind of like compare it to the original, the colors in these are fucking weird. Like some of them are really strange. And yeah, so just definitely take a peek um, before you buy one because you might get the wrong one. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure there's a medium peach. I think it's like the, all the names are the same, I'm pretty sure, in both formulas. But like, the medium peach, which I love in the original, in this new one, is like, the color is weird. It is strange as fuck. Like, it's literally, I'm pretty sure the medium peach one, when I looked at it, it was like, just straight orange. Like, it was odd. And so, yeah, I would definitely look at them in person. But the formula, is just as long wearing to me like on the face. Like I said, on the eyes, I do feel like it creases, but on the face, it's just as long wearing and just as full coverage and just as beautiful. For my under eye setting powder today, I'm using something I've been using a lot more recently and I don't know, depending on the day I like it, some days I don't, but lately I've been liking it. Uh, MAC Studio Fix Powder. And I'm using the shade NC10, which is pretty light, but I've just been using this under my eye just, I don't know, maybe it's just with this combo, it's like super smooth and very long wearing and keeps everything very matte, adds that really pretty smooth coverage to my under eyes. So yeah, I've been really liking it. And of course for this, I'm using my Morphe E49, which is like the best under eye setting brush of life. And then for the rest of my face, I've been using, like I mentioned it earlier, my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish a lot lately. This is the shade medium, so just like a little darker, then my face, like if I'm not careful about like making sure that I bronze my neck and stuff, I might look a little cray cray, but I just, like I said, I make sure I bronze my neck and stuff so I don't, so I like match. So I think the, the light ones are just a little more yellow based and you guys know I've been shying away from that a little more. So I like this because I feel like it neutralizes, like I'm sure you saw as I put this on, kind of neutralized me so I didn't look too like yellowy. So yeah, I just like the undertone of this. So I will bring this all on my neck and I use this big Jaclyn Hill JH01 brush when I do this because it's just like big and it gets the job done really fast. And you get like 
that powder everywhere you want it, but like I feel like you get a better, like more soft coverage. Okay, the best bronzer literally of life. I don't know if I mentioned it in my last video. Yes, I did. I did. I mentioned it in that Nabla video. This bronzer is something you need. It is so good. It is so beautiful. You see it has that amazing sheen. It makes your skin look so nice. The, this color is amazing. This is number 110, I believe. Yeah, 110 Sunlit Glow, but I'm gonna buy the other one too. Um, it's just beautiful, this formula. I've been really also liking this Nabla brush to apply this. This is the Big Powder Brush is the name of this one. And I looked on their website and actually their, their brush prices aren't actually that bad. They're very similar to Morphe brush prices. Um, but yeah, this brush is so freaking soft and just the combo of this brush with this bronzer, like it's just such a beautiful, like soft airbrushed kind of look with your bronzer. And I feel like I get a lot of compliments from like customers at work when people are asking me about what bronzers to get. I always um, tell them about this one because it's just really great and it's a good price. Obviously it's on the drugstore side of things and it's just so gorgeous and has that beautiful, like I said, like glow to it. So yeah, I love this. And I just feel like I look really snatched. Like when I do this bronzer, it just blends so softly with everything that I feel like I look very airbrushed and like very snatched, you know what I'm saying? And I've been putting that like on the top of my nose a lot lately and like down the sides because I've noticed it actually makes my nose look smaller. Does anyone feel that way? Maybe I'm crazy, I don't know, but I like it. And then I'm just gonna put it down my neck also. For blush today, I'm using one of my favorite. This is MAC New Romance Mineral Blush. It's just like a really pretty, soft, like corally pink has a really pretty sheen to it and blends super well. And of course, my favorite blush brush. This is the Morphe M554. I literally use this every single day for my blush because it's really soft and like the perfect size and shape. Of course, putting that heel. For my highlight today, I'm also gonna be using Cookie, which I used on my inner corner just because I like her, she's cute. So I'm gonna put this on with a MAC 184. Fan brush, I don't know, I don't know if they make this anymore, but I love this brush. I've gotten used to how light this is. You guys know when I first used this, I was like, mm, this is kind of really light on me and it looks kind of like white casty, but I don't know. Maybe it was the way I used it the first couple times, but I've been liking it lately. And then generally with this kind of, ooh, drop everything. Generally with this kind of look, I would just do a nude lip, but today I want to do like a red lip and be fun because why not? And I want this to be like a romantic look. I'm posting this look um, for like a Valentine's Day on my Instagram. It's not going to be up Valentine's Day, obviously, on YouTube, but um, I want to post it for Valentine's Day on my Instagram. So yeah, I think I want to do a red lip. So I'm going to grab that. So for a lip liner, I'm going to use Fire Roasted Lip Tensity Lip Pencil for MAC, which I don't think they make anymore, but any kind of like dark red. And then I'm gonna try this. I've never tried this before, um, but I really wanna try this formula because I haven't had a chance to use it yet. This is the liquid lipstick from Nabla in the shade uh, Vicious. But I think these are like more of a creamy liquid lipstick, not like a super harsh matte. So yeah, I'm gonna use those two today for my lip. And then to finish off the look, I'm just gonna throw on this Tarte Stay Spray. This smells really good. I went to a Tarte training the other day and they gave this to us as like a little gratis freebie for doing the training. It smells literally amazing. And the mist is so fine, like it feels really nice. Okay guys, so here it is, finished look. Hope you guys liked this video. Like I said, I, I really like this look with the nude lip. I'll probably wipe this off and put on a nude lip before I go to work. Um, but yeah, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you next time. Bye.